Hello again everyone, Tim here with Tim's Computer Repair. Just want to do a quick installation video. Basically it's a deinstallation and then an installation video on this computer that came into my shop. As you can see it has a single rad, a single uh, 120 mil closed loop water system by Corsair which has failed. This is an Intel motherboard with an i9 installed in it. And we're going to be taking this out and we're going to be replacing it with this guy. The MSI Mag Core Liquid 240R Liquid Cooling 240 mil rad closed loop water cooler. A deinstallation slash installation guide for this particular water cooler. Hopefully this will help somebody out who they're trying to install theirs or uninstall this type of cooler. So my plans are is to strip this cooler out and then we're going to mount this guy here in the front. I've already taken off the front panel here as you can see, exposing the screws to this fan which we are going to remove entirely. So let's get started by removing this and we'll go from there. So as we got here on this course here, we got these four screws that pretty much mount this water cooler, the water block. So I can just go ahead and just remove those screws. I'm going to do them kind of in a crisscross fashion here a little bit. Crisscross the tension a little bit. Then we can just remove them by hand. I'm going to unplug from the fan header. That's to come right off here. And the last one, we want to try to protect that pump from falling on the video card. Okay, we'll set that down just gently right here for now. Then we can go ahead and remove the fans here. I only use electric screwdrivers when I am installing or uninstalling computer fans. I do not use this on motherboards. Okay, let's just see how loose we are here. All right, we're still attached. Just going to go ahead and gently remove the cooler. And then we'll keep the fan here in its place. We'll keep that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fan screws from taking this off, get that mounted. That's just sitting there loosely right now. So we'll leave that. That exposes our processor. Yep, we can now remove this fan and its cable comes through here and it's wrapped up in a bunch of uh, wire ties here and a zip tie, which I am going to take off. Okay, and there is that. So I can follow that fan, this cable fan here, back up to this side of the board. And now I can see what header that is plugged into. So I will simply disconnect that. So you can see here now, we've got these four screws, fan screws here we're going to take off. Time to charge my screwdriver again, yeah? Pull that through. And this fan here will just be left over. Now I can take these screws and I will use that to secure the back fan. Hold the fan in place so it doesn't fall. Actually, we can probably go ahead and get one fan screw started here. There we go. And I should be able to remove the rest of these radiator screws. There's that. And then what I like to do is just simply hand tighten these fan screws. Once they're hand tightened, then we can go back and secure them. There we go. That one's all secure. Now we can open up this box here. Okay, in the box, quick installation guide. You got your two RGB fans in this case. Got the actual radiator itself coming out now. There you go. And we got the little bag of parts. 
fan screws, a little Molex to four pin fan connector, probably won't be using that. This is the Intel backplate, which we will be using. They're kind enough to give you a PWM splitter for your fans. Not sure if we're using those, we'll see. Then your screw hardware here. Okay, with this water cooler, the, the water block itself has a rotating head, so that way you can orientate your dragon whatever way you like once it's installed to keep your dragon facing the right way. Let's go ahead and I'm going to test fit this in here. So I'm going to see about where I want to put it. Test this. We're going to test fit this right around in here, which is pretty good in the front. I'd like to put it right about there. And we can have this mounted right about like that. I think I want to start off with mounting the mounting the fan mounting the fans in the radiator first. So what you want to do after unpackaging your fans, you want to go ahead and undo the cables completely. Then you want to be sure that where the cables go into the fan, you're going to want this part to be on the facing the back side of the case. And that makes for much easier wire management, easier to hide the cables. So in this case, this radiator is going to be going in like this. This fan will be going right here on this front side. So it'll be between the case and the radiator. The fan will be between the case and the radiator. You want to be sure that the airflow is facing the right direction. So once you know you have the right position, then we want to get just sandwich the fan there in between the radiator and the front of the case. We can go ahead and take one of our long screws, feed it through the hole of the fan here on one side. Then you want to get it fed through in this in this situation. I think I'm going to go this side that's closer to me so I can see what I'm doing. Got the long screw in there like that. Then you want to get it just barely threaded into the radiator hole on the back side. Once this started, it, it goes a lot easier. Okay, that I've got that started with a couple of couple of threads there, the screw. Okay, so now things get a little bit easier since you got one started. Oh, I got it in the wrong slot. That happens. We got to move it over. There we go. Let's see if I can tighten this up a little bit. Okay, so that's enough. I got a couple threads in there now that holds that up. So now I can take one more here at the bottom. I'll do one here at the bottom. Okay, we got we got that one in also. So what, what we have now is, you know, screws that are just loosely put into through the fan and into the radiator. It's loose because we want to be able to maneuver these fans around a little bit when we go to put in these other screws. And then, before we tighten it up, we'll adjust our radiator exactly where we want it. We can kind of go from there. Oh, that one just bit. See how I kind of moved it around? That one's in there too. Yep, that one's biting just right. So I got them lined up pretty good now. I think I got this one too. Yep, that one's tight also. So now, I'm still able to maneuver these, this whole unit. I'm able to move it up and down wherever I want it. And I'm gonna move it up to where I want it. Like it's right about there, I think. Yep, that's right about where I want it there. And then I can so I have it where I want, then I can go ahead and tighten these screws down where it doesn't go anywhere. So we're pretty much secure now. Then you just wanna make sure that your fans spin freely, and they do. So there we go. We have now mounted our radiator with our fans. Cool. Now what we want to do is take all of our cables, our fan, our fan cables and our RGBs, and we want to feed them through the back of the case. Now every case is different. So whatever way you think is best for you to route your cables, by all means, 
So there's no fan controller on this computer. It, like I say, every case will be different. I will also say we will not be using because this case, this particular motherboard does not have RGB headers. Uh, and she, uh, the, you, you can purchase a SATA to RGB connector, but in this case, she just doesn't want the RGB. She doesn't care about them. So we will not be worried about hooking this up in this video, guys. Let me feed that through where I want it just to kind of get it out of the way and hide it. So now that we got our cables and all that kind of go in the direction we want it to go, we can now look at mounting the water block. First, we must remove the old hardware from our previous water block. Okay, there's four, four of these little standoffs from our previous water block. Back plate off. So this is the old back plate. This is what we're going to be using as a back plate. It's what came with the cooler itself. Okay, this is going to mount on the back side. And then we're going to take these washers. And these washers will go between the back plate and the motherboard. And then these screws will go through there. Okay, this is what we're looking like. Right? And that holes there like that. To hold it on there temporarily, I'm going to use a bit of painter's tape to hold it in place. Just to kind of hold it there so I don't have to worry about it. At this point in time, I am going to clean the processor. It has old thermal paste on it. I'm going to get rid of that. A little bit of a coffee filter since it's lint free. This processor is ready. Okay, for the Intel socket, we're going to use this bracket. And what this bracket does is that it goes like this into this slot. Just like that. Exactly what we want. Now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and install these little plastic O-rings. And those go around the threads here that we pushed through earlier. And push them on and they get kind of tight when you put them on which is good because it helps hold the screws into place. Come down here to this one. I kind of got my hand on the back side of that. Last one. There we go. Now we can go ahead and do our thermal paste. Nothing wrong with it. That's just what we want right there. All right. Then we're going to use these type of screws here with the little springs on them. This is something you really don't want to forget about to remove this film. Okay, let's see if we can line this up. Line it up. Then we use our thumb screws here to one side down as far as you can so you have enough sticking out here where you can bite with your thumb screw. Same thing on this other side here. I'm not tightening anything down. Too awful tight right now. Okay, we got this bottom one on. I'm going to push and turn this one on. I had to push it in. And I've got my other hand on the back side of this to keep that other screw from, from pushing out. So I got three of them on there, really loose, enough to hold them. That guy's kind of hiding behind these pumps. I, I, can, I guess I can move these lines up a little bit. Ooh, this is really tight. That's going to be best for me on this one to lay it down. Okay, I've got this laying down on his back because you're gonna to have to actually, you know, push down pretty hard. Right there, you can see, I can push down, let me take this and then I can push down on that bracket and see if I can get that to bite. Yep, and that's what I had to do. We can tighten it up. We can tighten them up a little at a time. Got to make sure you're not cross-threaded either. Yeah, it's feeling a lot better. A little tip, pushing down on the bracket helps get these little screws started. Awesome. And there we go. This is facing the wrong way, so we'll just run him the right way. 
And unfortunately, she does not want to use RGBs on this, so I'm going to have to tuck these away nicely somewhere. Okay, once we're at to this point, what we have right here, this is the pump connector. The pump is located on the radiator in this particular case versus where it usually is sometimes on a lot of pumps would be on the block itself. This is just the RGB line that I'm just going to tuck back there just for aesthetics. We're not using the RGBs in this case. But this motherboard has a pump header right up here. It's usually labeled. It says pump. So I'm just going to bring this straight up here and plug that into pump header. So that's right. And we'll just tidy these wires up here in a minute. So then what we want to do is take the, the fan PWM connection splitter and we want to plug this right into the CPU fan header that's on the motherboard. Okay, and we'll pull that cable a little tighter. Okay, we have the two fan connectors here for the front fans that are on the radiator. We are going to attempt to plug that into here, but it's not going to reach. That one's not going to reach. This one will reach. Okay, I'm going to bring one of these fan connectors right through this grommet since it won't quite reach from the bottom. Pull it through this grommet here. So then I have the this fan connector and this fan connector both where they can reach this fan splitter that we just installed like that. Okay, now at this point, we got kind of a mess here. I'm going to touch this up, but before I touch this up, I'm going to test power, power on this machine and test it to be sure uh, we got ideal temperatures. Okay, I got it all powered up just to test everything out. Of course, there's no RGBs. I do have the fans running, which is a good thing. And my temperatures are holding steady here around 29. Uh, remember, at the beginning of this video, they were climbing into the upper 30s uh, and climbing. Uh, so, up oh, it just hit, now it's two, between 29 and 30, but this has been on for, I don't know, probably about 20 minutes. So, um, so listen, that is how you install this cooler. I would say the biggest issue I find with mounting this would be getting those thumb screws to push down on the threads. I kind of showed you the kind of nifty little way to, to push down on those ends to get those thumb screws on there. Nice looking cooler and if you want RGBs all you have to do is simply plug those connectors up that I showed you. These guys. Plug that into an RGB header on your board. In this case this would be a, a 5 volt RGB header. If you only have one header you can purchase you can purchase uh, RGB uh, splitters and just Connect those up and you'll have RGB. No problem. So I'm just going to finish putting this back together, tighten up this wire management, but I just wanted to kind of, a little tricky, you know, I just want to kind of give everybody an idea on how to mount this MSI Mag Core Liquid 240R Liquid Cooler. Hope this helps somebody out.